For waste management practices, radioactive contamination was released into the environment. What's more, the site is still crowded with waste accumulated and mismanaged during 37 years of Dow and Rockwell control. These wastes dumped or stored in barrels throughout the site and buried and leaking into the soil continue to threaten nearby communities. The grade for waste management is clearly an F. A third key area that must be completely controlled in the operation of a plant like Rocky Flats is that of criticality. Remember that if too much plutonium accumulates in one place, a deadly nuclear reaction can occur. This reaction, or criticality event, can result in a lethal radiation dose to everyone nearby. In 1989, a firm called Scientech was hired by the Department of Energy to study criticality safety at Rocky Flats. The team reported that they found several kilograms of plutonium in exhaust ducts in Building 771. That's enough plutonium to cause a criticality event under certain conditions. Before the study, plant managers assured that there wasn't such a plutonium buildup at the plant. But a former employee had specifically suggested exhaust ducts as a probable location for plutonium buildup. And the study team found indications of plutonium in other ducts as well. In addition, the team found about 16,000 gallons of plutonium residue stored in barrels in the basement with a broken sump pump, no water level alarms, and no radiation alarms. There were water marks on the walls and on the barrels showing that it had flooded in the past. The Scientech team found that this combination of factors was unacceptable in terms of risk of criticality, because if flooding were to occur, for example, from a broken pipe, a criticality event might occur. They also found residue drums in storage stacked up high on shelves but not restrained. The team found that in an earthquake the drums could fall off their shelves which could result in a criticality accident. In addition to these specific problems, the team reviewed 600 procedural infractions under Dow and Rockwell going back almost 30 years. The Scientech team judged that there was complacency and poor communication on safety matters. They found eight serious infractions that cut the margin of safety unacceptably close. The team also reported that the plant didn't follow DOE safety guidelines that there should be during normal operations at least two barriers to prevent a criticality accident. Finally, the team reported that employees seemed afraid to raise their concerns to their own supervisors. In their report, which covered both the Dow and Rockwell eras, the team concluded, quote, the team is not satisfied with criticality safety practices or with the understanding of nuclear safety standards by the workers in the plant." End quote. For criticality, Rocky Flats management gets a D. The only reason it's not an F is that fortunately, no uncontrolled criticality event is known to have occurred there. The final area of management performance we will examine is inventory control. Plutonium is both valuable and dangerous. It is important to know how much plutonium is on site and where it is at all times. This takes meticulous inventory control. As a key ingredient in nuclear weapons, plutonium is far too dangerous to lose track of. To keep track of plutonium, the plant is supposed to record how much plutonium is shipped in, how much is inside the plant, and how much is shipped out in either weapon parts or in waste. Just as with your checking account, the numbers should balance. When the numbers do not balance, the difference is said to be material unaccounted for, or MUF for short. There are five places where this MUF can be. The first place the MUF could have been lost is in the waste. Second is bookkeeping or measurement errors. Someone forgot to count the plutonium or wrote down the wrong number. A third possibility is theft. Fourth, muff could be accumulated in ducts, pipes, or other places. And fifth, the missing material could have been released into the environment, for example, from a fire or from improper storage, like at the 903 pad. Dow and Rockwell did a poor job of keeping track of plutonium. As a result, there are now some 2,600 pounds of plutonium unaccounted for. That's enough for nearly 400 nuclear weapons.
No one can reconstruct exactly where the muff went. Plant management gets an F in inventory control. As I mentioned earlier in this presentation, plutonium was not the only hazardous material handled at the plant. As indicated in this document, there were thousands of chemicals used at the Rocky Flats plant, many in substantial quantities. Some of these materials pose potential hazard to workers and to the environment if not handled with caution. One class of such chemicals is called volatile organic compounds, or VOCs. These chemicals are not radioactive, but are still very toxic. Some are poisonous, and some cause cancer. Huge quantities of VOCs were used at Rocky Flats to clean equipment. Plant management did not control emissions or disposal, and most of two to seven million gallons of VOCs used each year ended up in the environment. In the nearly 40 years of Rocky Flats operations, plant management fail time and time again in the way they handle these dangerous substances. Their failure has led to the release of plutonium and other radioactive dangerous substances into the environment outside of the plant boundaries. As was known to Dow and Rockwell, thousands of people live in close proximity to the plant. It's difficult to estimate with certainty how much plutonium was released to the environment, though some certainly was. The releases are especially serious given that inhalation of even a minute quantity of plutonium is dangerous, and given that any plutonium released will be radioactive for tens of thousands of years. Everybody agrees that plutonium has escaped from the plant into the off-site environment. They just disagree about how much has been released. Scientists from the Department of Energy drew these contour lines to show which areas they concluded were most contaminated. The areas within the contours closest to the plant receive the most contamination. The areas within the contours furthest from the plant the least. The contour line in the middle has been used to help define the classes in this litigation. The plutonium releases were preventable. For example, drums of contaminated waste should never have been left in an unprotected outdoor location like the 903 area. But even if they were put there, proper labeling, protecting the drums from the weather, good monitoring of the drums, and taking action when it was first discovered that the drums were leaking would have made a difference. These simple and common sense measures were not taken. Instead, Dow allowed the leaking drums to remain in place for years, leading to significant release of plutonium off-site. Regardless of how much got out or where it is now, about half of that released plutonium will still be in the environment 24,000 years from now. In 1989, the FBI raided Rocky Flats because they suspected that Rockwell was violating laws about the disposal of hazardous waste. After the raid, the plant was shut down and Rockwell was replaced as contractor. Since 1989, the government has employed EG&G and later Kaiser Hill to manage Rocky Flats. They barely begun the task of cleaning up the plutonium mess that was allowed to accumulate for nearly 40 years. No one knows precisely how much plutonium is at the plant or where it all is. DOE itself has estimated that there's still over 28,000 pounds of deadly plutonium at Rocky Flats, some of it in unstable form. As we saw with the 903 pad, the cleanup itself could trigger additional substantial releases. An earthquake could cause a fire and a catastrophic release. Another fire could cause additional releases of plutonium into the nearby neighborhoods. A serious fire could cause a catastrophic release and contaminate hundreds of square miles with astronomical cleanup costs. This threat, unfortunately, will be with us for a long time. This is the legacy of decades of negligence and mismanagement at Rocky Flats.